Okay. Welcome to the Very Social Broker, Chapter 7, Measuring Your Results. But first, did anybody do last week's homework on uh, a video, a reel? Um, did you post them? Did you make them? What happened? I got several likes. Microphone, please. Oh, yes, I got several likes on my post. Now, what, was it a post or did you put it in a reel, a story? Okay, and was this on Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram, great. Have you done the same thing for Facebook or pushed it over or? Yes, I did. What was the reel about? Are you friends with Greg on Instagram? Let's share the screen for a minute and go there. Because I have Greg's login. Which always makes it fun. All right. And what is your Tammy T A M I E Lynn L Y N N? The keyboard would work on is it nice? There you are. Well, you said it was a reel or a post? I think it's a reel. Well, I see some videos on your posts. Let's see what Tammy did. Oh, let me unmute it. Has been driving. I can't help you with that. I can't help you get a new house. So if you're looking to buy or sell real estate, give me a call. I may be able to help you find driving school for your husband. Happy day, friends. <laughs> hey, friends. If you're like me and get annoyed with your husband's driving, I can't help you with that. I can help you get a new house. So if you're looking to buy or sell real estate, give me a call. I may be able to help you find a driving school for your husband. <laughs> that was cute. And making a personal showing your husband, also showing your a real estate agent. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is going in before you post it and editing the video and adding your phone number. Make it super easy for them to get in touch with you. Don't make them search because they won't. They're not going to go look for your phone number. They're not going to go look for your website. Does it not show my phone number on my it, post? It did, okay. but that's not where they're going to look because yeah. that's they're looking at the video, not the post. Okay. Where Instagram is concerned, it's very visual. So if you start typing a whole bunch of words on your post, very rarely will anybody read them, especially on Instagram. That's what Facebook is for, is more, a little more wordy, but don't get crazy. Um, so yeah, great job, great impromptu. Um, I would add your phone number to make it easy for them to find it. And that's super easy to do on your phone, to do an edit, add the text, little phone number, and you can move it wherever you want. Okay. Um, so let's look at one more. How long? Hey friends, it's Tammy Walker with the market update for April 2023. So you can stay up to date with what's happening with our local real estate economy. The numbers I'm about to share with you come straight out of our local MLS. MLS stands for Multiple Listing Services. It's a platform only licensed real estate agents have access to, and the numbers are true and raw, no padding and no tweaking. So here are the numbers for South Central Kansas for the month of April. Last month, we had 333 new homes that went on the market. These are also called new listings. Last month, 564 listings went pending. This means that an offer was made and the offer was accepted. And if all goes well, the home will sell to the buyer. Also last month, 704 homes sold successfully to new buyers. Today, May 3rd, we have 1,028 active listings total, meaning this is the number of homes currently for sale. The average days on the market right now is 25 meaning the average home will sell within 25 days. The average day on the market is important to watch because the bigger the number, the longer it takes to sell. The smaller the number, the faster the home will sell. This kind of market creates a situation for multiple bids, many times over asking price. We have a very risk market and it is a prime time to sell. If you're considering selling, I can provide you a free market report for your neighborhood and show you homes that have sold in your area to give you an estimate on what your home may sell for. Message me here or find me on Facebook. 
This is Tammy Walker with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Alliance here in Wichita, Kansas, and I'm here to help. Thanks for watching, friends, and have a good night. You're so personable. And like I was telling you, she's smiling. She's very personable. Not that you're not, Flip. I'm not picking on you. I'm not picking on you. Okay, here's one thing I'm, I'm going to, and I don't mean any disrespect on this. Um, watch the wind into your microphone. You know, you're using your phone, I'm, I'm sure. Watch where the wind is directing. If the wind is directing, it sounds like thunder. And it, it will do this. You don't want that because you, you won't want that distraction. If you want them to watch longer, I'd make the video shorter. But my big question, and I pose this to Lynn because she did one very similar, is put yourself into the customer's shoes. Why is that important to me? Give me the nuts and bolts to give me numbers. You know, doesn't mean a whole lot to me as a customer or you know, potential client. But tell me, a seller's market, now's the time to list because homes are going fast. They're closing out, you know, they're getting under contract in this amount of days. If you want to use some numbers, make it relevant to me, okay? Otherwise, great. The more you do this, the better you're going to get. And these are very nice. And you're outside, you're saying where you're from. I love the fact that you wrapped it up with, I'm Tammy Walker with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Alliance. Call me again. I would post your, you know, if you're going to do a video that long, you might want to have something to keep them engaged. Emojis or seller's market or even um, the teleprompt coming on the screen. And also, please remember your phone number. So important. Don't make them go look for it because they won't. I like the way what she did a little bit different than what I did. And I liked her is she explained what pending is and she explained what under contract was, which is informative. It is. It is. And as the more that you do these videos, you'll find your brand, you'll find your niche, you'll find what works for you and what makes people relate to you. But also try to bring it down to earth and realize you're talking to people that know nothing about real estate terminology. And we're not here to educate them on it necessarily. We want to give them, especially with videos and posts, we want to hit them hard, hit them fast, and give them everything they need all at once. Because I want to, I want to be satisfied right now, this second. You know, you put something in the microwave for 30 seconds. I want it right now. Why do I have to wait 30 seconds? So great job. Did anybody else do it, Lynn? I did not. Okay, you haven't posted any, April? I did not. Tulio? Tulio did one. I see one. Hey, I have yeah. one. What's my Tulio? See, now, there, now, I will tell you, I remember when Tulio did this post last week. I loved it. His Cinco de Mayo post. Let's talk about your real estate needs. You know, and the fact that uh, he was also doing some of this in Spanish as well as English shows his versatility, but also shows that he's got a sense of humor. You know, someone, ooh, Cinco de Mayo, and I like the taco. And the cool thing is he went on the Security First app to create this. The app that they taught us about a couple weeks ago, that's where he made this. Um, other than smile, great job. <laughs> Show us those pearlies. Come on. You have a great smile, but I, I love this. That was so much fun. Um, the next one. The next one. This one? Yeah. Okay. Hello, this is Tulio Pardo, Real Estate of Wichita, Kansas. Uh, I am happy to help families to do their dreams and buy a house reality. Hola, soy Tulio Pardo, Real Estate de Wichita, Kansas. Estoy feliz de poder ayudar a familias a hacer realidad su sueño de comprar su casa por más de por 20 años, no por más de 20 años, por 20 años. Uh, que necesiten, con mucho gusto les puedo ayudar. Gracias. Okay. Hello, this is Tulio. 
Now, Tulio, you and I already had a little conversation on this where make sure that you are raising your camera, your phone up. Yeah. Don't look down at it. Um, I've got a uh, selfie stick. If you guys want to borrow it, there is the ring light, which is great. I know Lynn's been playing with it and having some fun with it. Um, smile. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the fact that you did it. A smile. You guys have great smiles. You're very personable. You're people persons. And I, I want other people to see that. But the fact that you guys are trying and you're putting it out there, rock on. Yay. Don't forget your phone number. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Phone number. And if you need some help learning how to do that, you'll find it's, it's way easier than you realize. It, when you hit edit on your video, you can do this on a picture. Um, your phone is an incredible tool right now since they're so updated that you can do all sorts of fun things. Um, you know, the fact that you're getting out there and trying and doing it is a beautiful thing. Now we need, and as they talk about in Chapter 7, increasing your following. You know, how do you do that? There's different ways of doing that. Again, like last week, I mentioned to everybody, you need to invite all of your friends on Facebook to <coughs> like the business page. Invite them. You got those little three dots and it says invite, do it and keep inviting them. Um, people on Facebook and you've got your Instagram. Copy the link to your Instagram because you can do that and you can even do a little QR code if you'd like and put it on your Facebook and say, hey, find me on Instagram. Here's my, here's my username. You know, tulio.pardo underscore homes. Find me on Instagram. This is going to start the chain reaction. And like the, uh, this chapter talks about snowballing, okay? The snowballing effect is going to go back and forth because Meta owns Facebook and Instagram. And they do go back and forth. It's just a different way on each platform to get people to follow you. On Instagram, the more people that you follow, the more people that you interact with, it's social, so be social, like, comment, um, the more your algorithm will come up and the more you're posting, the higher you will be and more people will see you. The more you follow, the more they will follow you back. It's kind of a courtesy on Instagram that if you follow someone, they're going to follow you back. Doesn't always work. but. It's, it works more often than you think. And so that is a great way to start building that snowball and rolling it down the aisle and collecting all of these people. Don't be afraid, and the book also will tell you this, this chapter, don't be afraid to follow competition. That's a great way to see what's going on and see sometimes what not to do, you know, but also see what they are doing and go, Oh, I can do that so much better. And I've got this idea and it will give you ideas on new posts and new ways to get your message out there, but keep trying and keep doing it because every time you do, you learn something new and you get better at it and you will find your brand. If you haven't already, believe me, you will. Um, anybody have any questions or comments at this point? No? Cricket? Cricket? No, I think I think what I've discovered is because you're supposed to have your different pillars of content, which I think is pretty cool, mm -hmm. is having a calendar of when you're going to post things so that you have that balance and um, you know what content you still need to generate a, a real for. Right, right. You, you've got to really plan this out because your schedules are already so full and so busy. And this is one more element that you really need to continue to build your business, but it can be quite time consuming. So I would block out some time in your day, every day, to post, to comment, to like, to be social. Um, and that includes Facebook and Instagram. 
but plan ahead what you're going to post this week and schedule ahead. You know, you go into the meta, meta business side, you can, and this is what we do, uh, what I end up having Kenya do actually, is she goes into the meta business side because you have a business page, so you have access to that. You can schedule for Facebook and Instagram ahead of time. So you don't have to go in and start posting every day, but you can schedule ahead and you can, you know, take an hour and I'm going to post this on Tuesday. I'm going to post that on Thursday, whatever it is that you can not schedule out. So make sure you are looking at that meta business portion of Facebook. One thing I noticed when I was posting on Instagram the other day is um, at the bottom, after I had finished it, it said, do you want to post it to Facebook? Yes. So you can push yes there, it'll go to Facebook. My question is, how does how does it go from Facebook to Instagram? It's, if you're just doing it on Facebook, you cannot just push it to Instagram. That's where you have to go into the business meta side and link, you'll see the link there to link it to Instagram. And when you're scheduling ahead, depending on the type of post it is. Now, if it's a long video, you know, it's not going to go on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's got to be less than 60 seconds. But on the meta portion of Facebook, it does allow you to schedule ahead for Instagram. One push is one way. Facebook will do it through the meta business. Instagram will push back to Facebook without effort. Well, I have a quick question because I noticed on a couple of people that I follow on Instagram, theirs was actually over 60 seconds. And so after 60 seconds, it says something like this, uh, this continues if you want to continue watching. Yes. So it can push, right? Well, it, it, it will, but what they've done is they've uploaded to either a reel or the IGTV on Instagram. And what that is doing is giving you that 60 second snippet on a post. So in hopes that you'll click through and watch all of it. That's what they're talking about when they are doing the snippet for the IGTV, it will post that one. Okay, I guess I'm a little confused what IGTV is versus a real versus the post. Okay, IGTV is the Instagram television. That's where you can post long videos. Where do you find that? So you have to go to IGTV instead of through your account? Is that what well, you're... no, it's here in. And I'm sorry, I'm not more versed in the IGTV. But as you can see, there's fitness and all sorts of different makeups for IGTV on long videos. Okay. But if I wanted to post a three minute video, mm -hmm. How can I do that? That is reels. I have a feeling, and I'm and I'm sorry again, I'm not as versed as I should be on the IGTV. If you are uploading, just like when we, you know, we want to do a post, you go to that little plus sign right there, it's gonna know how long it is. So it will most likely put it to the IGTV. And then the snippet, which is 60 seconds or less, will be the teaser post. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. So you can drag and drop, but it's smarter than we give it credit for a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> Elena, did you do any videos this week? A video, and I posted it on Facebook to my, my microphone. Face. You the might want to turn it on. Turn it on, on Sorry. <laughs> The little gray button at the bottom. There you go. The video on Facebook and posted it to my boosted it to my clients and three of my clients commented. So that's great. Yeah. I'm about to take it down though. <laughs> oh no, just I mean stop but, boosting your right. So if for those of you that don't know what a boost is, on Facebook, you can boost, which is a paid advertisement. You are paying to reach a larger audience 
in a larger area. You can even pick different areas if you want to hit Salina, if you want to hit New York City, you can. <clears throat> but Lynn and I were working on boosting posts and you can spend as little as you want or as much as you want. So, and that is completely up to you. Yes, is there validation and value in boosting a post? There is, but it's not the end all be all. We're not saying that you have to pay to increase your audience or to increase your following, okay? So, you know, if it's super, super important, if it's super, super great, if it's just information that you've just got to get out there, I can understand doing a, doing a boost. One of the things that I noticed on my posts is it will tell me how much better percentage wise than my other posts are doing. Yes. And the one thing I found is the personal posts are actually doing much better than my business posts, which made me kind of drove home the idea that you have to have a, a content and a balance in those contests. Yes. Yeah. And that's like he was talking about last week is that balance between business, personal, lifestyle. You've got to have to show that you're a real person. And it's better and easier to make those connections with other people when they say, oh, you're a dog lover. Or, oh, you're a foodie. Uh, you're bilingual. All of those things connect with other people and they want to connect with you and see what you're doing next. Again, it begins that snowball effect to get more followers, to get more likes, to get more activity. The more activity you have, the higher up in the algorithm you are and the more often you will be seen. Does anybody understand hashtags? Kind of sort of now. Well, in the book did explain a little bit. I disagree with him on several points. Um, hashtags were originally created for Instagram as a way to search different content. Well, it's now gone beyond Instagram. You can, it's a searchable item on Google. And if you've seen our posts, we will do the corporate hashtag, which is BHGRE. We also do the local hashtag of BetterKS. Um, and those are ways for other people when they're searching BHGRE, these posts and this information will pop up. Um, he mentions to do 12 to 17 hashtags per post. Please don't. That's bad. That's crazy. I don't know. I, I'm sure you guys have seen the posts on Facebook. You've seen them on Instagram where there's this post and then a list of 3,000 hashtags. Again, that is not... Nobody wants to see that. They really don't. And it's not really helping them because the people that I see that are doing all of those hashtags have a very low following. I read something recently where um, Instagram is actually looking at the quantity of hashtags mm -hmm. and it actually hurts you if you yes. too many. Yes. Matter of fact, the, the number of hashtags that are the best are three. But I, I would come up with six or so hashtags that you can interchange depending on the type of post that you have. So we've got our two standards that we always do. And I'm going to be implementing another one um, after reading more of this. And depending on the post, if we sold a home or uh, we've got a new listing or whatnot, I'm going to have Kenya add the hashtag Wichita, Kansas homes for sale because people are searching that and that will bring us higher up in the algorithm for them to come in and deal with BHDRE. So quick question, can you look at keywords and then see what kind of response the different keywords are and develop a hashtag list from that? Well, you can and I would go on Google to do that. Um, and you'll even see as you're adding hashtags to a post, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram, that if they have been used a number of times, it will pop up and show you BHGRE 2 million times. Oh. And better KS, you know, 100,000 times. Um, so yes, it will give you a sense of, oh, that's a good hashtag. <laughs> But don't get crazy with the hashtags because just like Lynn said, yeah, 
in the long run, it's going to hurt you if you use too many. But come up with a, a good, you know, six of them that you will interchange with, you know, um, things that you want them to search for or based on your post, you know, whether it's you just sold a home or, ooh, multiple offers, it's a seller's market, hashtag seller's market, you know, and people do understand the term buyer's market, seller's market. They're like, okay, those are good things. I don't know really what they mean, but those are good things. So I'm going to search for them. So again, come up with six, be selective, but usually don't use any more than three because in the long run, it's just going to, it's not going to work for you. And you can use those on Facebook, on Instagram, and it's a good thing. It's a searchable thing. So are we all? I'm just, I'm really, really hesitant to agree with you on just three. And the reason I say that is because there's so many different types of audiences that you want to reach. Now, I, I agree that more than five or six is too many. But, I mean, I just feel like you're going to reach a, a broader or audience if you have uh, two or three maybe hashtags that pertain to the same thing but would be searched for in a different way. Well, and, and that's that's what I'm saying. Come up with different things depending on the post itself. Make it relevant. You know, come up with different. If you've got a list of 10 and you interchange those. I And the reason I say three. Are you making these up? Huh? Yeah. You're just making them up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> Call me. You know, the point of a hashtag is just something searchable. So again, put yourself in your customer's shoes of what would I be searching for? Why is this post relevant to me? And use those hashtags. The reason I say three is because they, they tell you nowadays, don't use more than four. Three is safe. Four, you're, you're pushing the line, but yes, you can get away with four. And again, you're not going to put any spaces between anything. It's going to be hashtag and Wichita, Kansas homes for sale. All squished together. You start spacing them and they no longer become a hashtag. So no spaces, no anything like that. Um, and that will help you out. Now, I know I wanted to go back real quick. Sandra had done a couple of videos. Uh, and she is integrating Fozzie Dog. Oh, here's one. Here's a real. Like her shoes, realtor. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing she's in Lance's car because of the base. I don't know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Fozzie looking out the window. Do you have any reels? Just that one? The other one you posted on Facebook, didn't you? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. All right. Now, Sandra's just getting up and running on her business page on Instagram because she has two posts, 24 followers, which is awesome. You know, for only having two posts, two posts, and she's following 20 others. Keep following others. Again, don't be afraid to follow the competition. They will follow you back because they won't see what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there's really nothing wrong with that. We follow other companies, other brokerages here in town, and they follow us back. And we've seen in the past that they will see what we're doing and like it so much that they start doing what we're doing. So we know we're doing something. You know, because copying somebody is the best, yes, best form of flattery. So. I'm going to start copying Sandra. There. <laughs> but if you go on Facebook, um, where do you get those shoes? Right, where do you get the shoes? Elena says. Um, Amazon. Oh. <laughs> those cute. are they pretty stinking. Yeah, they weren't. They come. They used to have them in high tops too. <laughs> April needs something with a heel. <laughs> <laughs> So who else here has, um, I'm sure Elena has her Instagram. I don't even know because it won't. Stella Elena. 
still not be from my Facebook. It only feeds from my personal page, so it's kind of weird. So, and you've got a business page on Facebook, right? Yeah, but it won't be from there, so. And although you've got this, you say that you're a realtor, is this an actual business page? I have no idea. I'm going to guess it's probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> not. I don't know. So I just post from yeah. You'll have to go into your. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. No, I'm not going to block you. Don't worry. Follow back. We're going to follow you back. Now, if you're looking at Instagram, go to your notifications over here on the far left. This will show you who has started following you. Follow back. Who has liked your reels? Greg's been busy. But go through, go through here and follow these people back. But check your notifications. That will be a really fast way to get through your being social. Okay. <laughs> with that being said, I hope I 100% agree with you. And I'm looking at the people that's following her going, why do I get the crazies? Um, oh, I got a crazy. Then. Oh yeah, you're gonna get crazy. So I had a crazy, and I didn't unfollow them, but I, I did something to where they can't post on me. Yeah. Or they can't message me. Yes. So they don't know that they're blocked or whatever. I don't know. What right. So I just go into their profile, and if they don't have any posts, or if they've got a thousand followers and they've just got a couple of posts, and they're trying to be, oh hey, I hope you're not offended by me saying you're beautiful. They're gone. Yes. But I do go into their I go into their profile before I just automatically follow somebody back. Just oh, hundred percent. And, and I I completely agree because you are you are going your social media is worldwide. You are going to come up with crazies. So yes, look at it before you block them. Make an assessment. Ask the questions like Lynn was doing, and decide whether or not this is not going to work. <laughs> okay, hugs and kisses. Love you, bye. Yeah, no hugs and kisses. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, it's more of a middle finger, but whatever. There you go. So. What's PhD Real Estate Town Center? What is that? She's being followed by BHG Real Estate Town Center. Who? You are. You are. Because we're on your page. Oh, it's like it shows you, like, I don't yeah. know what it is, but it shows you, like, historic homes or something. Oh, okay. But yeah, I would also uh, look up the Better Homes and Gardens uh, group. There's many of them out there, many brokerages, and some of them worldwide. You know, connect with them, and again, that will snowball your following and your algorithm to get you higher up, so people will see your posts and comment and like and back and forth. Again, be social. It doesn't take a bunch of time, and you don't have to put a ton of thought into it. But if someone comments, on your post, comment back. That's the whole point of this, because if you don't, oh, they just put me on. You don't want them to feel like that. So if someone says, hey, that's great, you know, click like, but also say thank you. Again, that builds your algorithm because you are being social and you're commenting back or you're hearting back if you're on, you know, Instagram, it's a heart. But you have a place to comment. So, you know, please do if someone comments to you or instant messages you. Be careful with the instant messages. If it's, you know, looks weird and you're getting people, hey, baby, you want to go on a date? Yeah, you probably not want to say anything bad. The, the <laughs> other thing, when I, and I was, because I was such a newbie at this Instagram stuff a month ago, um, there was a lot of people that would say post on blah, 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 or, you know, shared it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. You know, so I would respond to them and say, how do I do that? And then I find out that they're just scamming me basically and want to just yes. get onto my whatever. I don't know what why they wanted me to post to them, but it's more of a scam. Um, Kenya told me that. So I, I've learned that too. Yeah. Uh, if someone is asking you to share this post on XYZ and give you the link, don't. You know, if someone... On Facebook, especially if your posts aren't shareable, someone may ask you, hey, can you make this shareable? And that's easy to do. Um, 
that's one thing. If they're asking to make it shareable so that they can share the post, maybe it's a great new listing, you know, or I really like Lynn's video and I want other people to see it. Make sure that on your business page, your posts are shareable. And so when someone says, hey, make it shareable, well, it already is, and they can take it. Again, that builds your algorithm to get you more followers, to get you more likes, to get you more comments. So this chapter was kind of fun. Um, everybody did a great job on trying to post videos and new posts and, and find their niche. I'm proud of everybody. You guys did a great job. And again, the more you do it, the more you try, the better you're going to get. I'll line up and see what I did this week. Let's go to the end. Let's go I did last in. week. And can you tell if that's a business account or not? I can't. We're following you then. No, I don't know how. You would have to go into your own profile okay. and it will show if it's a business account or not. I can't necessarily see it since I'm in Greg's account right now. Oh, okay. Um, this is what happens when he gives me all of this password. <laughs> I will touch his stuff. Ooh, that sounded bad. Anyway, Lynn, you're looking pretty good. So you've got some, some personal stuff up there, but you've also got business stuff up there. Um, I know uh, Kenya is supposed to be emailing you guys when you have a new listing, sell a home, and she's sending you those posts so that you can put them on Instagram or Facebook and or share them, which would help us as a group, share them from our Facebook page, our Instagram page. Okay, I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Scroll down, first picture, that is my clients. Right here? In the front of their new house. And um, I stole from Sandra, I said yes to the address. But my question is, how do I get it on the picture itself? My phone number and- You would have to edit like the picture prior to the post. Okay. All, when, especially with Instagram, it doesn't give you a whole lot of options to do a bunch of editing. That's why you've got to edit the video and edit the, po and, and edit, uh, the post picture prior to putting it out on Facebook and Instagram. So you could have done that on your phone, um, you know, and put your phone number and, and then we'll go. Can well, you do it on Canva? You can, but most phones have every type of, you yeah. throw emoji, yeah, editing, you throw emojis on. You can throw text on, you can, you know, heart it and, and do all sorts of crazy things with it. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to use Canva and alter the picture there, rock on if that works. But yeah, you'll have to edit and have everything ready to go prior to posting. Yeah, because I, I knew that there was some things I was, I knew there was things I was missing. I just had no idea how to do it. Right. So, okay, I'm gonna. And every time I see you creating stuff, you're getting better each time. You're learning something new each time. That's why I can't stress enough, but I know I repeat myself. Keep trying. Take a photo, any photo. I don't care if you do a selfie of yourself and use that to edit, to play with it, to manipulate it, to see what you can and can't do because you're not going to hurt anything. But take a picture and jack with it. Take a video and mess with it and see what if you can do the closed captioning, which you can. Lynn was playing with that on her phone. Uh, see what emojis come up because you want to keep that engagement, especially if the video is over 30 seconds long. You're going to lose them unless they have a visual to keep them engaged, whether it is the closed captioning, whether you're throwing up, you know, it's a seller's market and you got an arrow going up all of a sudden and it goes away and your phone number comes up. You know, it's, it's those kind of simplicity. Yeah, it's very simple, but it keeps them engaged a little bit longer. If you can keep them there a few seconds longer, it's a win. Let me ask you this, just, just asking for opinion here. Um, Tammy had a really nice verbal market update. Mm -hmm. Sold with Steph. Um, I went, hers popped up, and all hers had was a picture, pending, sold, listings, and active. And it just had numbers. Which do you think would people would pay more attention to and react to? The video. 
Okay. Oh, 100% because, again, put yourself in the client's shoes. Okay, there's a bunch of numbers. So, how, what does that mean to me? At least I had someone trying to explain it to me. I may not still have got it or stayed long enough to stay engaged, but I've got a lady with a smile sitting outside and, and telling me these things, and I'm, I'm sticking around a little longer. So yeah, I, you know, <laughs> if you want to throw up numbers to each their own, you're not going to get as much response by just throwing up some numbers. Yeah. Because they don't mean anything to anybody but a realtor. Right. Realtors are the only ones that are going to know what that means. Constantly put yourself in the other person's shoes and, you know, ask yourself, is this something Joe Neighbor next door would understand or get? When I was in radio, when I did television, I constantly had to ask myself because I had to paint a picture without video on the radio. Well, is this going to be relevant? Are they going to get it? Are they going to understand my sixth sense of humor and be okay with this? I mean, am I going to get my point across? And over time, every time I did it, I got better. Every time I did it, I knew how to do it faster. Every time I did it, I got more engagement, more phone calls, people calling in going, oh my gosh, I had to pull the car over. I was laughing so hard. That's a win, you know, just with the videos and the TV shows that I've done, the commercials. Again, I had to put myself on the other side of the camera. What are they seeing? And is this going to be relevant to them? Or are they going to get it? Okay, the other question that I have is I'm looking at my post and I mm -hmm. do not see any really continuity to it, which is something we talked about last week. Right. Um, you know, I've got my little grandkids on the river rafting, and I think that's a real action. See if that's a real. Because right. I don't know how to I don't know how to post a real versus right here? Yeah. I don't know how to post a real versus okay. Well you posted and this it. is what we do the beginning of spring. Grandkids are here at the cabin, canoeing. Well, and <laughs> you, can, you can tie this into real estate, though. This is what I do when I take a little break from taking care of all of my buyers and sellers. I love to spend time with my grandkids canoeing on the lake. Again, you're tying it back in, mm -hmm. but you're showing that you have a life. You can, you're showing that. Hey, I love canoeing too. Maybe I should call in. What, you know, wow, I wonder where that was at. You know, now if you're wondering how to make it a reel, that's easy. There's the post. You posted it. But when you're going in to create, it's going to give you an option to make it a reel. So what's the what's the benefit? And there, it is a reel. I was I was wondering. Yes, you so did. What's Yay. the benefit of a reel versus a post? And I know I've asked that before, but it's not sneaky. Reels, people like to go in and watch snippet videos. It's no different than TikTok. Oh. It's no different than the vid little video snippets that you will see on Facebook. I go look at those, you know. Um, stories on Facebook last 24 hours and they're gone. So I really never understood that point. I think it was to confuse mm -hmm. Snapchat. Ah, Snapchat. I think reels are how Netta competes with TikTok. I think reels are how Meta competes with TikTok and stories are how they compete. Makes sense. Makes sense. How do you go into your home on your Instagram and only see what is happening with the people that you follow rather than just a bunch of junk? Well, the people that you follow, you can find when you click on your profile and you can see your followers and how many posts you've done and you can click on those and you know, see that list of people. You're also going to see a lot of them in your notifications. You're also going to see them on your feed. Now we're in, in your account right now. Let me go back home. Because bear with me, this is Greg's account. Sorry, Greg. Um, but here are all the people he's We went out to look at a house that please stop. Um well, let's let's part that one. Yeah. But here is what you're not up to date with. And it will tell you once you get down to the bottom and you've seen everything that you're up to date. Okay, so he's 
these these are the people though, yes right? he's seeing the people he is following mm -hmm. in his feet now if we go over here and click his picture then there's reels and here's his followers and if you see the little hand there's your list when i go to my home i'm just seeing a whole bunch of stuff that i don't suggested for me or things that I, I'm not following, people I'm not following. Right, and it will always do that. Yeah, that's that's normal. It will always give you suggestions because you liked this page, well, then you might like this page. So, well, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for the moment. So maybe it's back of my cat, I did my hair. So does anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, was this beneficial? Was this helpful? Cricket, cricket. I get some head nods, thank you. Thank you in the back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Ray? So it was very beneficial, yeah. There's some good stuff here. I need Appreciate to catch it. up. I need to catch up to the social media scene, that's for sure. The best thing I can offer on advice with that is to jump in and start trying. Try, 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 keep doing it, keep posting, keep being social, commenting and liking on other stuff. Call me because I've already done it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and no, you haven't done it wrong. You're learning. I mean, none of these videos that we've seen today are wrong. We can do better and here's some ways to do that. But what it is, is it's not wrong. Here's just some other ideas to add to it. That's all it is. So I will go ahead and stop the recording. Stop.